the theme of this exhibition is exploration. And so I'm starting the tour with Age of Exploration number one. When I made this painting in four parts, I was mindful of the porthole effect and how this can concentrate you as the viewer on my focus as the artist. I was thinking about how to make a landscape which weaves together a hundred different stories. What does exploration mean, both on a global level and on a personal level? I made the painting on four canvases because it breaks down the surface into quadrants, like the division of time on a clock face or the face of a barometer, and it has a satisfying symmetry. It's a circle within a square, a framed globe, a mathematical order encompassing a complex human story. The little girl reaching out to explore the sea anemones does so against a backdrop of migration and the historic and global movement of peoples, as well as looking at our human impact on the natural world. By the way, this tour is not an ordered journey creeping along the walls. This is a bit more like real life. We jump about, we find connections in all sorts of places. And so to the oldest work in this exhibition. I made Hidden City after a visit to Yemen in early 1992. This coincided with a very difficult time in my life and I found the experience inspiring. It reconnected me with my creative energy. The imagery of closed doors, the hidden nature of trauma, the intimacy of Yemen's history, architecture and life moved me deeply. This was also the first time I had the opportunity to explore a culture outside of Europe and where I felt unexpectedly at home. And speaking of other cultures, my connections with China have been profoundly important over the last 17 years, and many of the works in this exhibition reflect that. This piece is called Working Women. So I have a book of photographs taken in China between the 1850s and 1880s. The people are often objectified by the Western photographers, but not always. I found this photograph entitled Working Woman in Shanghai. And as an older woman who works, I felt a shared connection. We are from different centuries, different cultures, and are doing different jobs. But we are both working women. And now we continue on to Age of Exploration number two. This painting interprets exploration in the widest sense of the word. The young Kashmiri girl is learning to read in a refugee camp school. The young man is a singer-songwriter called Benjamin Clementine. He left the UK some years ago and arrived in Paris destitute. He started busking on the street and was picked up by a music agent after only two days. He is now very successful. The Chinese antique figures are playing polo, a game which the Chinese exported all over the world. Exploration and travel, be they forced or chosen, have enriched our world and ourselves. The Chinese proverb which inspired this artwork is Fish swim in a vast sea, as birds fly in a boundless sky. And it's a collaged painting on paper. I've called it Boundless Skies. We do not have to limit ourselves. The world of our imagination is vast. My granddaughter peers out on a panorama of planes, hot air balloons, ships, freighters and pleasure boats, all vessels of transport in one way or another. Our imagination is the vessel which can transport us. And here is Age of Exploration number six, which has some literary connections. When reading James Joyce's Ulysses, 
I'm struck by how the writing manifests an extreme inclusiveness. It appears as though nothing is left out. All the words and thoughts tumble out in confusion. And yet, Joyce carefully shaped this book with endless rewriting and refinement. The intellectual and verbal profusion may not have a conventional story, but it is intensely structured and embodies Joyce's worldview. In this work, there are many thoughts, images and narratives scattered across the canvas. I have structured the work around a single theme, that of exploration. However, exploration contains a universe of human experience. It is a metaphor for the complexity and interconnectedness of life. This painting also features my four beloved grandchildren. The next work is called The Dream of Zheng He. It's inspired by the story of Chinese Admiral Zheng He. He is believed to have discovered the Americas between 1421 and 23. He came from difficult circumstances, through war, great personal loss, and forced castration as a boy. However, he became a hugely important explorer and navigator. His vast fleet of huge junk ships sailed around Africa and down the east coast of Australia. These voyages would have been impossible without his endless curiosity and fearlessness his desire to encounter other cultures and other peoples. The artwork also features many stories and images of other explorers and different kinds of exploration. Both of these works are from a series specifically about human migration. I made this artwork on the left as a way of honouring my great-grandfather, James Minton from Cork in Ireland. It's called The Immigrants No. 1. From 1896 onwards, he spent his adult life building boats in Cork for six months of the year and then sailing to New York for the remaining six months where he worked building sets on Broadway. He did this so that his family could avoid the grinding poverty of Ireland at the time. Ellis Island was the gateway to New York for all the immigrants, and they arrived with aspirations and ambitions to make good their lives. In the immigrants number two, we see Aleppo, destroyed by bombs, and it looms like an island truly at sea. The early 20th century transatlantic immigrant ship and the dinghy sinking under the weight of refugees are testimony to the continuing drama of human displacement. In a parallel narrative, there's a reproduction of the ship in which Marco Polo crossed the Mediterranean, and a Ukrainian mother and child wait on a bench at Ellis Island. These stories represent the travel and exploration which have helped to connect people from all over the world but in our media-rich world, the dramas of refugees and immigrants are played out before an audience. On the one hand, this means that we are more informed about what's happening globally. On the other hand, if we're not careful, these often tragic tales are turned into voyeuristic entertainment. Odyssey Explorations, The Digital Journey, is one of my first new media works. I made it in virtual reality using Tiltbrush software and then created two synchronised projections, one for the wall and one for the floor. The theme is once again that of transformative journeys. I was inspired by the story of Odysseus's journey as he made his way home to Ithaca in the aftermath of the Trojan War. It's a story of obstacles and hardships, errors of judgment and lessons learned. 
It is the ultimate metaphor for our human condition, for the experience of life itself. The wall projection shows a series of imagined vessels turning in circular motion and the poetic quotations which inspired them. The soundtrack was composed by Alan Stones and evokes both space and the oceans. On the floor we see the same vessels turning round and round, but from an aerial perspective, against a seascape created from a film of the waters around Liverpool's Albert Dock. This artwork was showcased at Tate Liverpool, Open Eye Gallery and Royal Albert Dock on Slavery Remembrance Day, 23rd of August, 2019. And finally, my last stopping point is called Remembering the Scribe. And the scribe featured in this work is a Qing ceramic figure which came from the family antique shop in Cork. My mother always kept it on display. It was the subject of my first observational drawing as a small child. It's badly damaged and has no real commercial value. And that's partly why I loved it. It would never be sold. The scars and cracks which speak of old stories and adventures encapsulate the passage of time. I have exhibited it with a 3D model of the scribe, which following my mother's death has found a home with me.